Welcome back inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. After the Patriots wrap up the regular season home portion of their schedule with an effective, if not pretty, 33-16 win over the Tennessee Titans. Chris, there was a lot forgettable about this game, but there was also something very important accomplished, and that was win number 12 of the season as the Patriots inch step closer to a first-round bye. And boy, do this, does this team need it. Yeah, I think that that is the absolute key for this team right now. Other years you can argue, well, you know, you need to buy, you don't need to buy. I think right now, given the health issues that this team is facing with the postseason looming, you want to have as much time as possible between the end of the regular season and the start of the postseason so you can rest up some of those key guys. We saw Dante Hightower play today, start today for the first time in a couple weeks, but he left the game in the second half. Danny Amendola was banged up at some point with a knee issue. Uh, that's sitting aside, you know, you're not even talking about the Julian Edelman situation. So you get to 12 wins. That's nice. You can get even closer next week. You can you can clinch a home field. You can clinch not home field, but you can clinch one of those two bursts, one of those two playoff spots uh, with the bye if uh, Pittsburgh ends up beating Denver a little bit later on. So I think that's what, if you're a Patriots fan, that's what you're looking for this afternoon. All right. In the second half, there were some injuries as well. And the one that concerns me the most is Patrick Chung. He was banged up by jo his, uh, actually enemy fire. Jonathan Bostic ran into him on the Delaney Walker touchdown. And uh, the good news is that uh, Chung was spotted uh, in civvies uh, in his jeans, walking around the locker room post game. Uh, so he was walking around, but they cannot, the way he is, guarded tight ends this year I don't really think they can afford to lose Patrick Chung no I, I think that they've gotten really good safety play and that's one of the more underrated aspects of this defense over the course of the first 14 games uh, without Devin McCourty in there today I thought they played relatively well. I thought Duran Harmon has come along an awful long way over the course of the year but yeah if you lose Chung for an extended period of time I, I think it's a serious blow but you know I, like you said he was walking around the locker room afterward he didn't talk to anyone but he looked like he was moving a little slow. And I think at this point, that's all you can hope for if you're a Patriots fan, given the nature of the injuries that this, you know, that's happened to this team over the last month plus. All right, let's move on to the other big storyline, at least going into the game. Uh, hours before the game, Rob Gronkowski on his Facebook page put up a dedication to Dana Parento, a very close family friend who passed away last week, forced him to miss uh, practice on Friday. He said he wanted to dedicate the game to him and what happens on the very first drive Tom Brady finds him for a seven yard touchdown pass he points the fingers to the sky and after the game I had a chance to talk to Gronkowski and he said you know that he was very sure that Dana was up there pumping his fists all pumped up for him very excited and uh, that's where his thoughts were how did you think that Rob Gronkowski played with such a heavy heart I, I, I think he did as well as could be expected under the under the, under the circumstances I think when you consider the depth of the friendship, we've read about a little bit over the last couple of days. I've talked to some people who are close to this situation. These two are very, very close. And for Gronk to be able to come out here and play as effective as he did, I think that says a lot about his mental toughness, to be able to battle through a situation like that, come out on the other side, and do a good job executing when it comes to getting his team a victory. I mean, I just think it's impressive anytime We talk about injuries, and Matthew Slater after the game said, it's not the team we're worried about, it's the individual. Will I apply that to Rob Gronkowski? Mm -hmm. In this case, the team was going to be fine, uh, yeah. barring something completely unforeseen. They were going to win this game. But the way Rob Gronkowski put everything on the back burner and came out and played this game at a very high level really impresses me. Yeah, it does. And it says a lot about who he is and his ability to, I don't want to say compartmentalize because that sound, could sound a little flip in this situation. But at the same time, I think his ability to, to act like a professional and to be able to come out here and play at the high level that he did over the course of 60 minutes says an awful lot about him. Offensively, I think there might be a little bit of concern given the second half they didn't score a touchdown against this Tennessee defense uh, that uh, was ranked near the bottom in a lot of categories in the NFL. I think they had allowed 18 touchdown passes coming in. They allowed two in the first half to Tom Brady. They don't score a touchdown in the second half. They get the three field goals. Steven Guskowski even misses a field goal. How much concern for you in a game like this does that present? I don't think it's a huge concern. I think that it is. It's, it's, it's difficult to measure because you want to be able to look at the end of the day, you come out of here with a win. There are certain things that, and we talked about this on the Sunday show with Greg beforehand, there's certain things you want to see this team address going forward. You want to see them tighten things up. You want to see them get to a spot 
where you feel good about their chances on offense, defense, and special teams going into the postseason. There's still little things here and there, you know, health-wise. Uh, special teams, they dropped another punt. Amendola didn't drop another punt, but he fumbled, fumbled a punt. Right. Yeah, they're, 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 they're things like that that you want to see them clean up between now and the start of the postseason. It wasn't a great win, as we mentioned off the top, but at the same time, at the end of the day, a win's a win, and you move on from there. I want to talk about uh, also the pass rush. We knew coming in it could be a big game. It was. Chandler Jones had another big game. He uh, now has a new career high with 12 and a half sacks. And uh, as a team, they sacked the Tennessee quarterbacks a total of five times. Uh, they are well on their way to establishing a new mark under the Bill Belichick era here in Foxborough. Your thoughts of the defense today, especially the pass rush? I think that to rate a defense purely by sacks is a little bit dicey because sacks can come in bunches and they can come as a result of you know good coverage downfield they could come as a result of a good pass rush they could come as a result of a number of different things that a being team said, passing all the time exactly that being said i think it's a good sign for new england that it continues to get a consistent pass rush even in a game like this going up against a team like tennessee that was one of the worst teams in the league when it came to allowing sacks so you got to take the positives we talked about some of the negatives early on you know you take it all with it with it, you know the big picture here it's a good thing for the patriots to be able to put up those kind of defensive numbers even in a game like this against a lesser opponent. Okay, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about the Hawaiian hammer. Joey Yosefa, number 47, I th he was fabulous. And he really, he trucked one Tennessee defender, a cornerback on, on the outside, uh, Cody Sensenbaugh, as a matter of fact. And it was one play that I think a lot of, you know, you said it was a forgettable game. It's maybe the single defining game of this, uh, play of this game that fans will take with them as they leave. Your thoughts on the way Joey Yosefa, a practice squad uh, rookie out of Hawaii, played. What, what is it about fullbacks that lend themselves to becoming cult figures? I don't know. It's it, just it, the way they play the game, especially here. Yeah, it really is. I, I think it was, and, and more one of the more entertaining aspects to this game was the sight of Yosefa doing what he did. He reminds me a lot of Keith Evans mm. in his ability to not only carry the ball but also to serve as a fullback. Most fullbacks, look, we saw James Devlin here the last right. couple of years. He was more of a battering ram type who only carried the ball in short yardage situations. Yosefa appears to have a little bit more flexibility. And look, if Monty Ball isn't ready for prime time and the Patriots decide not to go in on Steven Jackson, Joey Yosefa, I think, did enough today to warrant more carries going forward. He certainly was entertaining and fun to watch for the fans in a game that really didn't have a lot of storylines coming in. All you can do if you're the Patriots now is hope that a lot of your key players that were dinged up in this game recover quickly. The Patriots finish up the regular season with two road games next week in New York against the Jets and then the following week in South Florida against the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots now 12-2 and on the season. They are on the verge. Chris of wrapping up a first round by and next up is getting that number one overall seed. That would be a big deal. What's going to happen here at Gillette Stadium in the next two weeks? Well, you can see behind us on the scoreboard and on the field, they're going to get ready for the Winter Classic, the Boston Bruins and Montreal Canadiens playing on New Year's Day here inside Gillette Stadium. So this will become a major ice skating uh, rink, venue. a venue, venue. and uh, the... Uh, they're going to move the rink that's outside at Patriot Place inside. I don't think they're going to do they're that. They're not going to move the whole thing, but they, they're, there's going to be skating. You know, they're skating out there in the winter. They're going to they're, they're going to have skating in here, and, and it's going to it's going to be a great experience. I'm looking forward to seeing what this place is going to look like as nice rink. It is going to become a winter wonderland. That's what I was trying to think <laughs> of. Thanks for picking me up. That's why you are a great partner, yeah, Chris. That's why we make a good team. All right. The final again here inside Gillette Stadium on Sunday. It was the Patriots 33, the Titans 14. He is Christopher Price. I'm Mike Petralia, weei.com.